We can look at the Dead Sea Scrolls and see it for how it was written during Jesus' time. The Dead Sea Scroll of Isaiah was dated at least 150 years before the birth of Christ. And it's amazing. And we get to look at the actual words of this. Check it out. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. So this is speaking of the Messiah, right? The government will be on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. (laughs) Jesus is the Prince of Peace. In fact, real peace will come after he comes back first to take his bride and then comes back after seven years after that great tribulation period establishes his government his kingdom on this earth so like when jesus was talking about here's how to pray um, thy kingdom come thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven he was speaking about his 1000 year reign on this earth from jerusalem just as revelation chapter 20 says Six times and seven verses repeated over and over and over. It's going to happen, you guys. So (laughs) let's check it out some more. So his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Love that. And they will cease from gloom for her who was in anguish in the former time. He brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. So where is the land of Zebulun, land of Nephtali? Well, where it intersects right here is where we see Nazareth. This is Nazareth right here where, where Naphtali and Zebulun intersect. And so it was a part of that prophecy fulfilled because Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth. So Isaiah 9, he was called, that's why I think he was called the Nazarene. So Isaiah 9 continues, but in the latter time, he, he, uh, has, he has made it glorious by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. It's a beautiful place right now, full of orchards and pomegranate trees. And it's just an amazing place, you guys. So he, um, so I'm sorry, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Who's the great light? Jesus said this in John chapter eight, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isn't that beautiful? (laughs) The light of life. God can give you life, my friend. If you feel depressed and down and and you have no hope in this world, that's okay because there isn't any hope in this world. Hope is only found in Jesus Christ, the Savior, your Savior, if you choose to receive him. And you will have an opportunity at the end of this episode to receive him and be born again, to have new life in him, to be promised to go to heaven and to live forever and ever and ever with Jesus. That's what's important. Where does your soul go? Who cares about what? who can kill my body? Who can kill this body This um, that I'm here on this earth right now? Because if I get killed, I go straight to heaven and I'm there forever and ever. You should be more concerned about who can destroy your soul. That is eternity forever, you guys. That's what's important. So it was a beautiful thing that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And we saw that in Isaiah 9, saying that he that the Gentiles have seen the land of Galilee, they have seen a great light. So Isaiah 9 continues, and those who lived in the land of the shadow of death, to on them light has shined. Jesus shines light in that shadow of death that we're we're all aware of, right? Because we all have that certificate of death because of what happened with sin. That's why. So Isaiah 9 continues, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. Isn't that great? If we're reading it again, I know, but I love it. For to us, a child is born. A son is given to us, the son of God. That's what it speaks of. This is total prophecy. I mean, we're speaking about the Messiah here, but we're saying a son was given to us, Isaiah says, through God, because he was prophesying. 
So we can see Mary and Joseph that was speaking of that very first Christmas when they were making their way down to Bethlehem where they had to do the census and that fulfilled prophecy because Jesus was born in Bethlehem of the tribe of Judah, by the way. And the government will be on his shoulders someday someday and it was when he was on that cross the government will be on his shoulders because when he was on that cross he bared the weight of everybody's sin and if you choose to receive him you will be forgiven of that because he paid for it on the cross when he died on that cross so the government basically the whole world was on his shoulders and he purchased it back and he's going to take it back 100% when he returns for his bride and then later rescues Israel during that time of great trouble and then comes back to this earth to rule and reign from Jerusalem, just as the scriptures say. So Isaiah 9 continues, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace so good and then of the increase of his government and his peace there shall be no end this is speaking of an everlasting peace a peace that's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and guess what he can give you peace in your heart right now too my friend and it continues on david's throne and on his kingdom to the to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on even forever that speaks of his return and that great peace that will come during that reign of christ reign of jesus from jerusalem you guys so good and it's on david's throne that would fulfill that prophecy because he is of the tribe of david of of judah right which is of the lineage of david and the zeal of yahweh of Yahweh of armies will perform this. And I love this because the Dead Sea Scrolls uses the word, the name of God, Yahweh. In fact, there was a little scroll, like a little lead scroll that was found recently. That was from Joshua's time, which called God Yahweh. Yahweh. Isn't that amazing? We could actually see that today, that that knowledge has increased in these times. In fact, the Bible says it would be near the end of times that knowledge would be increased. It's in the book of Daniel. Check it out if you wish. But my friend, as promised, if you have not received Jesus Christ to be born again, and you would like to do that, you can do it right now. He is only a prayer away. You can receive his love and his life that he wants to give you right now, right where you're at. Just stop what you're doing and say this prayer after me. You are praying to God, not to me, not to anybody else. This is a prayer between you and God to receive new life and to be forgiven. That's our greatest need as human beings is to be forgiven by God. Would you like to do that? Do you feel that you would like to receive Jesus? Even if you have doubts, try this prayer. Believe in your heart. Even if you're, you have just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of believing that maybe he really is the Messiah, you can pray this prayer and see for yourself. Would you like to do that? Pray this prayer after me if you'd like to receive Jesus. All right, repeat these words. Here we go. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me. And I believe that in three days, you were raised from the dead, Jesus, and you're alive today. I choose to follow you from this day forward as my Lord and as my Savior. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, my friend. If you did that, heaven rejoices right now over one who turns from their sinful ways and turns to Yahweh, to God, through Jesus Christ. So if you did that, congratulations, my friend. But hey, don't forget to click this playlist right here to learn more how to find Jesus in the Old Testament very exciting uh, series we're doing right now. So click on this playlist and God bless you, my friend.